Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed. The subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, how's it going? <clears throat> I just yanked my uh, camera out of the way right before I started, so let me put it back. <laughs> Hi, Elena. Hi, Dylan. How are you feeling? Are you feeling better? Hello, Kelly. Thanks for coming. Let me um, change this a little bit. Here we go. And let's see. I'm gonna take down the brightness a little bit because I'm gonna use my iPad. Hey, Terry. Hi, Aisha, how's it going? Um, that might be better, right? We'll see. <laughs> okay, so um, this week I am drafting some overalls uh, for my husband and if you're following along, it doesn't matter what who you're doing them for. <laughs> Hi, Margaret. So um, if you want to make them for you or someone in your life, uh, I'm going to be starting from a pair of uh, jeans, a ready, not a ready to wear. Um, Store-bought, my gosh, a pattern. I'm going to be starting from a pattern and you can start from whatever pattern you like. Um, the one, I, I've made two pairs of jeans for my husband. I've made him the Jutland pants by Fair. Uh, thread theory designs and I've made him the wardrobe by me jeans most recently and I asked him I said you know of those two pairs which would you like me to base these overalls from and he chose the wardrobe by me jeans the Jutlands are a little bigger on him and I didn't fit them at the time I could totally use those but you know it's like you, you know he's not a sewist so he doesn't really know he knows what he knows, you know. <laughs> hey, Libby. Hey, Kristen. Hey, Rachel. Hey, Carrie. How's it going? So those, um, he's a pretty small guy, and those are a pretty full jean. Um, I only, after I made him for him, I tapered the leg a lot and changed the inseam, and that's it. Hey, Sydney. Hey, Shem. How's it going? Hello, peoples. <laughs> So that's where I'm going to be starting from. And today is pretty much going to be about drafting. I don't think I'll be cutting today. And the reason is because I might, I don't know, I might do a prototype and then fit them on them tonight. I'm, I'm pretty confident because I, the jeans are kind of the tr trickiest part. Um, the great thing about overalls is anytime you're doing a one piece garment, the trickiest thing to fit is the torso. Uh, so like if you were making a jumpsuit, um, you'd need to be able to stand in it and sit in it without the crotch riding up or being too saggy. And that's kind of a hard thing to kind of figure out on each person. But with the overalls, they're very forgiving because you have straps and the straps are adjustable lengths, right? 
So you just want that pant to be relatively fitted, you know, through the hip. I, I say pick a pair of pants that fit the person from the hips down really well. Um, make them put them on and then do your measurements from there and I'll tell you what I measured. So day before your solo vocation, woo woo, but it's super fast. <laughs> Why are you here? Get out of here. Get ready. <laughs> this is available to watch anytime. You can watch this on the plane. <laughs> you can listen to it in the car, whatever. <laughs> No, you're fine, Shim. I'm just starting. You've got the 30-day jitters about a vacation. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guys are so funny. <laughs> you guys all have uh, – remember in high school, the last year of school, we always called it senioritis when you're just, like, over it. <laughs> you're useless. Like, you basically have to get everything done before the end of the first semester because the second semester you're pretty useless, you know? So – <laughs> That's where you guys are at, right? <laughs> um, if you're new here, my name is Sarami, rhymes with Jeremy. Um, and if you want to know more about me, please feel free to ask. Um, but I've been sewing a long time and I worked as a pattern drafter in the garment industry. So I really love drafting. Um, I don't do it a lot here, mainly because I don't like assuming everybody has the, the starting points, like a block or whatever, a sloper. So I use a lot of ready to wear. I ready to wear. Why do you keep saying ready to wear? I use a lot of store-bought patterns to sew on this channel. So, <laughs> hey, Danny. No, I start at 11 a.m. For live streams, Shim. Shim, we need to have a little talk about your, your clock. <laughs> I always, almost always start live streams at 11 a.m. I just don't monkey around with that time. The, you're getting confused with the workshops in the guild. I, ha I start those a little earlier because they're geared towards people in Europe. And that is a little easier for them. So that's why I started at 10. That's why it's confusing. I'm sorry. So vacation short timer syndrome. Hey, Elena. I already said hi to you, but you should wear the pants pattern you want to use for your birthday outfit. Ooh. Oh, they weren't? Oh, that's a bummer. I really enjoyed seeing your um, experience with the top-down, center-out, pants-fitting method in the guild. Occasionally, if you're new here, I mentioned something called the guild, and um, you're welcome to check it out. A lot of these folks are in there. Um, and it's, it's a, a community. It's free to join, and there are paid groups. But you get access to the whole community part of it with the free thing. So people share their makes in there. It's a, you know, it's a really great space if you're really over social media or you want a more secure and private place to share things, so. <laughs> yeah, Shim, I know. I know I can tease you too. <laughs> I am the last person to lecture anybody about a clock. <laughs> My idea of time is so weird that um, I just don't make sense of it anymore, so. You know what I mean? I'm a very, very in the moment type of person. So much so that when I'm really, really busy, I just look and see what the next thing is and I just do it. Cause I'm a planner and I'm a prepper too. So I prep myself and then I'm like, okay, that's the stuff I need, you know? I mean, you guys definitely see when I'm not that prepped though. Oh, thanks Terry. Yeah, that's the website, sosoguild.com. You don't need to put anything in front of it. Just sosoguild.com. Oh, interesting, Elena. Both Vogue pattern. It's not going so well mostly because I don't know how to transfer those changes via the method of the paper pattern. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> That's funny, Aisha. <laughs> all right, so this is my little list. So, you know, I went to my husband and just said, all right, you know, put on, sorry, I just whacked the microphone. Um, I had him try on the jeans. And that is a picture of him in the thumbnail, like just part of the jeans. Um, and I sew those jeans for wardrobe by me. Like sometimes people will hire me to do their how-to videos. And so that's, why, that's when I sewed those. And I didn't make any changes because they were for the video. And then once that was done and I gave them my husband, I made them in his size, I, then I narrowed the leg and everything. Um, so that's how I how I have that pattern and how I know how it fits and stuff. So I had him try it on. Hey, Malin, how's it going? <laughs> That's awesome, Shim. He's like, um, you're late. 
<laughs> you're late for your sewing, <laughs> your online virtual sewing <laughs> life. <laughs> so, okay, so I tried them on. I asked him first, you know, what would you, what do you not like about these pants, like fit-wise? And he told me really all he wanted was the length, because I had already adjusted the leg circumference. And so that's about all I have to deal with that's going to affect this overall pattern. And so the last thing I, the last few things I asked him were, what does your dream overalls look like? What do you want as far as features on it? He wants a hammer loop, and he wants it on his right side. He's left-handed, but he does use a hammer with his right hand. Um, and when you look in pictures of overalls, I'm pretty sure the hammer loop is actually on the left side, interestingly enough. Um, he does want a bib pocket. He wants it to be able to hold a pen, a writing utensil, um, and his glasses, uh, and especially because he wears safety goggles a lot, um, um, and nothing much else. Like there's a lot of sophisticated bib pockets out there with zippered pockets behind him, and I offered that. I'm like, do you want a phone pocket? He's like, no, 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 I'm gonna put that um, in another pocket. So, <laughs> Aisha, that's hilarious. You guys are so funny. Um, he still isn't sure. Yeah, I'm definitely a shady character, Car Carrie. He shouldn't, he shouldn't, he's not sure. <laughs> oh, exactly, Elena. Yeah, you definitely want to do that. It's a private community, but you know, <laughs> we're all, we can see it. <laughs> um, he also would like another leg pocket on the opposite leg of the hammer loop, like that little diagonal one. And then um, at the very end, once we did a bunch of measurements, I got his list from him. I was like, let's just look at a few overalls on the internet because he was kind of saying no to a lot of things that he, he was like, no, I don't need that, I don't need that. I'm like, all right, let's just look. So I feel like that can trigger like, oh yeah, I forgot overalls has, have that. I don't like that, I do like that. And so we looked at them and so um, we're gonna make this little pocket a little bit more sophisticated. Um, he also would like a reinforced knee from the lower leg down. And I think that's everything of his request. So the bib pocket, the hammer loop, the um, narrow pocket for, basically he wants that for like a knife. Um, and then the reinforced knee. So those are his features. These are the measurements I got. So if you've got their pants on your person, I say these are the things you ask them. Do you want these to fit like this? Obviously overalls don't have a set in waist as far as the waist holding up the garment on the body. The straps do that. So you don't really want that waist to be, you don't want these overalls to be really tight. Some people might, but the, you know, the thing about overalls really great is that you can put it over clothes. And you also, um, I know this from experience working on a farm. It's really awesome if you're doing things like shoveling sawdust or chucking hay that, that doesn't go down your pants. Um, and it kind of prevents that from happening. Very underrated feature, by the way. <laughs> it's nothing like straw or sawdust in your pants so yeah that's what I did Shem because the well I, I mean I don't do the I don't usually mess with the inner very much unless it's pretty extreme and the reason I don't is because most often that inner leg is up against the leg but some of them like Mullen said you know some of them are pretty drastic and you might want to take them off evenly. I took it off on the outer. It was very obvious it was hanging from the outer. There's not a lot of room between a person's legs to add width to the bottom of a pant, so most patterns don't monkey around with that unless you're talking about bell bottoms and things like that. Or straight leg, like like very straight like stovepipe. So all right, so when you have your person in front of them, um, say, all right, so how about we make these like two inches bigger or come, come, kind of come up with a number. Now remember two inches, when you're pinching two inches, you know, it looks like, you know, like this, you know, like this is two inches right here. Welcome, Juliana. Like that, you know? So remember, if you could pinch this on the side of a garment, that's two inches. So when you're pinching in it, what looks like an inch, it's two inches. Just remember that kind of thing, especially if you're talking with someone who doesn't sew. 
um, because that kind of stuff adds up quickly and you might not want to trust what they're requesting. Um, just try, try and kind of give them something to visualize, you know, something concrete. Um, I decided where we wanted the bib, so I measured up from the waistband. So one thing you need to do is when you're looking at your, your person in their pants is tell yourself, okay, I'm gonna make, take all these measurements from the top of the waistband or the waistband seam. Whatever you're doing, just make sure you have a little chat with yourself so you remember where you measured from. So if you're going to measure your bib height and you measure it from the waistband seam, just remember that you did that. And that might be really helpful because when you're looking at your pant pattern on the table, the waistband's not attached to it, so you're gonna have to add that. So just make sure that whatever you do, you're consistent. They don't have to know, just write it down or something from top of waistband. All my measurements go to the top of the waistband or the waistband seam or whatever. Um, Cause that kind of stuff can really mess around with your measurements. That's a lot, that's like two inches. So, all right, so figure out where you want your bib height. Um, and figure out where you, how far up on the sides that you think you want it and kind of and touch them, like go, does this feel right, right here? Cause I mean, my husband was like, oh, I want the bib. Oh, sorry. I want the bib right here. And I was like, are you sure? Like that looks really high. How about right here? And I, I touched him. I kind of went like this. And then I said, let's go look in the mirror. Let's go stand in front of the mirror. And that really helps visualize it. Um, and in the back, um, the measurements I got are, um, I got my waistband up to the top of the side. I got my bib height. And I also measured a circumference. Like I put the tape measure around him at the top of where I want those overalls to end, like up here on the high rib cage. I put the tape measure around him and I held it in the finished measurement. So I put it at like, you know, whatever it was, 36 or something. And, and it was like, how's this looseness feel? Cause when you can kind of feel like, it's like the garments there, you know? Um, the other last measurement I think I got, let's see if it's at the last one. Um, oh, I got the reinforced knee. I measured up from the hem of the pant to the top of where he wants that reinforced knee to end. And I did that on the inseam and the, the bottom of the hem. And then the last thing I did was I figured out about how long I want that strap to be to the front. And so I took the tape measure, I put it at the back waistband at the top, and then I pull it all the way over his shoulder and to the where I thought the bib was. And so I measured up from the front. I was like, okay, this is where I'm saying your bib's gonna be. I actually put a little pin on his shirt and then I measured to there. Now the strap doesn't go all the way to the top of the bib. You're gonna add like a tail and you can weave it in whatever hardware you're using. And then that way you have some adjustability, so. Um, the other thing you're going to need to know is what hardware you're using. So if you're just going to use snaps or you're just going to put a buttonhole and knot it, fine. Um, if you're going to just use snaps, you might want to put a few so you have some adjustability, but it is a bit more fixed. Um, and then if you're going to use something like a classic overall buckle, you know, where you weave in the strap, I have one over there, I'll show you in a little bit. Um, you're going to need to know the width of that overall buckle before you make your pattern or whatever you do is gonna dictate what buckle you buy because those come in a couple of different widths and you'll wanna know what size to make the strap the, to weave it in there, so. Oh, should you go up or down? Hmm. You know, how stretchy is your, your denim, Mullen? You're in between. I, I would say go, uh, go up, it may make the waistband fit you. I don't know. Um, you know what's funny is that I gained a lot of weight in the last couple years and my ash jeans were the only jeans that still continued to fit me. <laughs> but they've always fit really close. And the style I made was like kind of the skinnier style. Yeah, I mean, I should, exactly. Like that's the thing is like how stretchy is your denim? The denim I used was very stretchy. And so it's kind of funny that of all my jeans, the, the, those still fit me. Whereas my others, like all my gingers and things, those denim, those were sewn in denim that wasn't as stretchy. I felt a little uncomfortable in those. <laughs> so, 
that that the ash jeans are the ones that fit me proportionally pretty great everywhere um, for my body. So I need to drink a water. Sorry. All right, so I think we're pretty close here. Um, I'm just gonna draw some things on my iPad to kind of cement in some of these um, these like features. Yeah, Elena said it good. Yeah, <laughs> we're all wondering what's your fabric, Mullen. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, and are you in between everywhere or just like waist hip? And you know, those are not low rise. So if you feel like they're already gonna be a little too high rise, that's something to think about too. Sometimes I do the length of one size and the width of another. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty stretchy in between everywhere. Hmm. Um, well, if you go up, you can always take them in. Could you grade between the sizes, like draw the line in between? What is the, is the, it's a one inch difference. It's not much. It's a one inch grade, isn't it? I can't remember. All right. Oh, oh, so I have only recently sewn two pairs of overalls. <clears throat> one was the Yanta overalls by Helen's Closet which aren't a very uh, traditional style overall. And this pair here, which I know is really dark, you can't see anything, so I'm gonna lighten it up for you. This, I did not sew the way they were intended. This is the Sew House 7 Burnside Bibs. Wait, sorry about your eyeballs there. So what I did with these was at the time the, when these overalls came out, there weren't a lot of overall patterns out there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I did a few things to modify them. I didn't really like the, the idea of wrapping the waistband around me. That doesn't really work for me usually. And um, I did add a side button closure, which I incidentally don't really need. <clears throat> I'm really sorry, my throat. I haven't talked much today, so. Yeah, right, Elena? That's so true. And I will say, Mullen, you know, I made two pairs of ash jeans at my heavier weight, and now that I've lost 10 pounds, there's I still love wearing them. Like, they still fit me great, you know? That doesn't make much difference size-wise sometimes, so. So I thought I'd get these out because I, I figured these out a long time ago, like, okay, how do I want to add a little button thing? And I kind of did this, forgive the pun, on the fly. <laughs> so, but I think it's still like a great reminder of what do I need getting in. He didn't really care about the button closure on the side, but, and he didn't really think he'd need it and I agree, but I think I'm gonna give it to him and I'm gonna do that because it looks more traditional um, I'm not gonna do a functional fly, but I think I will do something that looks like there's a functional fly. So if you want a functional fly, um, <clears throat> let me think about that. Like I wasn't really gonna go through and sew it that way because it does. It has a fixed waistband at the top. So it it's only really a hole there. So, you know, think about that if you want that in yours. Yeah, right, Libby? I know. I agree. I think it, and it depends on the denim, too, so. Oh, really, Mullen? Oh, okay. Um, are you asking me, Kelly, or Mullen? Are you talking, because I do have elastic on the back of these overalls. These don't fit me very good because they fit me almost too perfectly. Yeah, right, Elena, I know. Oh, me? Yeah, I think you could. You know, like this pair here, I just put it across in that waistband tunnel. These have actually aged really well. My problem with these, I never wear these, and um, partly it's just because, I don't know, they're really, really wide leg, and I, maybe I should just wear them because they are cute. This was like a mustard 
crocheted ribbon and it's totally faded. But yeah, so these are the, um, what are these called? Burnside bibs. And they have pockets on top. It's kind of a nice way to simplify your pants if you want to. So, all right, let me, let me turn down the brightness and we'll, let's just sketch a little bit on the iPad and just kind of get a little bit of a plan. This kind of helps me get, wrap my head around it. It's like, even though I'm not really doing the, um, the drawing right or the pattern drafting, it kind of starts making me think in that way. <clears throat> Oops, here we go. I'm not a very good sketcher, but this will help. I have the brightness down on the iPad so low. Oops. Can I bring it up a little bit? That'll work, right? Okay. All right, so let's just kind of get a general silhouette, right? So let's see, like, like things like this, like, okay, here we have our armhole juncture, you know, where does that top waistband come? It kind of comes, you know, before the, it meets the waistband, right? I am going to put in a little bit of waistband because you, you do need a seam here if you want to have standard pockets, right? I can't see my brush over here. All right, here is our fly. All right, and then do we want like a pointed pocket? He wants a pin pocket here and then something a little bit bigger on this side over here. All right, I'm just quickly doing this. And then, does not look about right? I think that's about where those are. I'm not really, Shem. I, the only thing I, I can draw passably well is um, anything garment related. <laughs> I, I, I've been trying to teach myself to draw, you know, I've mentioned that a few times the last couple of years, but um, it's just something that I struggle with so much that I find it more frustrating than relaxing. And I recently was like, you know what? You don't mind drawing clothes. Why don't you just stick to that? <laughs> you know? Okay, so we have our hardware and it's above the bib. Oops. Right, so it's up here. And then we have our hardware. I'm gonna do traditional overall hardware. There is going to only be um, a pen pocket, like a writing utensil pocket, and a um, pocket for his glasses. And so I was asking him about that because I was like, well, you know, do you want your phone? And I, I like, part of me, oops, part of me was like, I don't really like the idea of dividing this pocket in three if we're really only using two of them. So let's just, you know what I mean? Because why not just make it for what you're gonna use it for? So we want a pen. And then, you know, he wants his glasses to be snug, but this kind of bugs me dividing this in two. Like, what do you do that with that thing there? So maybe I shouldn't worry about it too much. You know, <laughs> it's not my pocket. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, well, thanks, Jim. <laughs> um, you know what? That's the one thing, um, and hi, Mafio. Um, he did say no coin pocket. Because remember, I, I did get a little called out for not putting a coin pocket in some of his jeans. So like right here, I'm just going to leave that. All right, and so he wants the loop, the hammer loop. 
in his right leg right there. And then on this leg over here, he wants a, and maybe I'll leave it expanded. It goes like this. Well, that was gigantic. I'm using like this gigantic pen size too. All right, so this is at an angle. Um, and then we're gonna put one that's straight across on top of it right there, like this. I love the dashed line thing. It just helps me, <laughs> you know? It just helps me kind of visualize. And sometimes when I start drawing something, I'm like, oh yeah, that won't work, <laughs> you know? So this is a good, it's a good exercise for me. Um, I've been asked by um, kids and aspiring designers if they can see my, like a long time ago when I was, you know, working in the garment industry, um, for my to see my portfolio and it's always so disappointing pointing to tell them I don't have one that most of my drawing and designing I do like a squirrel <laughs> where um, when I do the drafting my sketch is usually on the paper I'm drafting the pattern on um, and I don't know why I can't break myself of that habit that just makes sense for me because usually why when I'm working things out yeah, but, <laughs> right, Libby? This is not a man who is as focused on snacks as me, though. That would be, that's something I have to do for me. He wants it for a, um, a, a knife, Mullen. And then when we, when we were looking online, he saw this little addition of one on top, and he was like, oh, that'd be great. And I can't remember what he said he was going to put there. Cause I don't think this is big enough like to even hold a tape measure right there, you know, like a, a carpenter's tape measure. So this is only like three inches. So let's, let's draw, let's do another layer for our measurements so we can kind of, um, and we'll do a different color. So, and let's also, come on. I can't see my thing here. Okay. We'll do some, measurements here and then this I think is so when you're doing things like this and it's really hard to know well I don't know what I want I don't know what measurement I is I I, I need um this isn't probably what you want to hear but push yourself to figure it out because you're gonna have to figure it out no matter what anyway some things may sort themselves out as you go like oh the space that's a left to me this pocket size would look best in that little area right but other things especially if it's function based push yourself or the person you're talking to to commit to a measurement because if they don't know and you don't know what are you going to do you know so I don't have the dimensions of his glasses shim but you know what I'm thinking is I'm kind of thinking like, I never see him out there with his like reading glasses on. I think he's talking about his safety goggles, which are kind of th um, thick, you know, cause they're curved. I've got room for extra tacos. <laughs> yeah, I used to call that um, room for ice cream. <laughs> Good for her for leaving room for extra tacos. <laughs> okay, so one of the other things I've been trying to think about is um, the, the, let's do some more measurements actually. Let's do some more measurements. Oh, let's draw in our reinforced knees. So I was thinking of mimicking something I see, you know, where they go like this, like that for the re knee reinforcements. He doesn't want rivets either. And I think that's because the last time I put rivets on his jeans, it didn't go well and they've been cutting him. Don't you love that? Hey Martina, how's it going? We're making overalls today. 
Oh, I'm doing this on the wrong layer. Wah! So we'll do this. Okay. Um, and on this one here, I'm going to erase that little bit so we can see our measurement there. All right. All right, so we have our knee things, knee, reinforced knees, and then we have a measurement for that. And it is 21 and a half inches. Okay. Um, and as far as this above his waist, I got 18 inches. From here to his, oops. Really eight inches. That is a really deep armhole. This is supposed to be eight inches. That's not gonna work out. See this proportion here? And then this right here was 14 inches here. So let's change this to be a little bit more up high. Like that. <coughs> I'm so sorry. I like that. Oh, hey, Susie, how's it going? I like that idea, flannel. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I've got a tickle. <coughs> That's a little better. Okay, so for the back strap to the front, we have, I'm thinking here, let's get rid of some of this. Oh, let's do this. All right. Yeah, we could definitely do a flannel pocket. I like that idea. What the, I don't think I need the reinforced knees on the back, right? So let's see what our, what's our back gonna look like? Right? Kind of messy. That's what our back's looking like right now. What else is back here? I think there's a center back seam. So this actually goes, how does this go like this, right? How does this go again? How does the, like this? Wait, Ugh, I don't remember how this goes. Um, <laughs> every 50 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I think so, Shim. I think I'm going to leave that as one big pocket. I think you're right. <laughs> Sydney, that sounds like me toasting nuts. 
They have a reinforced back hem. That is so smart. Uh, when I made him the Jetlands, I made him like jeans. There weren't a lot of men's jeans patterns at the time. There's not that many more right now. All right, let me think about this. It goes like, um, one is laying under the other. Why can't I picture this? Uh, I had this all sorted out in my head. Um, and then it has this like fake diamond look, right? What do I want it to be? That's the more important question. Because this gets sewn here. And I feel like there's a seam here. Is it like that? And then this is more like this. Right? Oh my gosh. The top of the back bib should be like a little house. Hi, Na Nancy. How's it going? Oh, I did, Nancy. Yeah. Yeah, Sydney, when I used to do that, I used to have to do it in the broiler, which was under our stove, and I would sit on the floor. If I got up, it was over for the nuts. They would just burn, you know? Um, this is like, this will come to me. I, let's just not worry about it right now. I know you guys are all screaming at me right now. <laughs> like, how can you not remember how that goes? <laughs> oh, man. Whoops. Okay, so we're on this one right here, right? Yeah. Okay. So we'll just draw this in like this, okay, for now. Will that calm our nerves here? All right. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, so... I think we're pretty much ready to start something, you know? It's kind of messy back here. Okay. What do we think, you guys? I feel pretty good about that. So I've traced off my pants onto extra paper and then I pulled out the pattern pieces that are for the front pockets, the fly, uh, curved fly facing and the front and the back and the pocket bag, pocket bag, the pocket bag, the pocket facing, the fly facing the front and the back. And that's all you need. And I, and I would also, and maybe the waistband, like I think I will use the waistband on this. Um, I, I didn't finish my thought earlier. If you want pockets like this on the front, you have to have a seam going across the front. So if you want to, if you're like, okay, I really want to make overalls, but this is a little bit of a stretch for me to do all these details. I'm going to simplify and I'm going to put um, no waistband seam. So that means you're going to have a, uh, let's do this in a color. You're going to have a center front seam right here. Um, I just picked green, kind sir. Here we go. You're going to have a center front seam going down the center of your your pants if you don't have the um, waistband seam right here, okay? Remember that. And it will look a little bit funny. <laughs> a butt flap. <laughs> He's got overall clasps. <laughs> he can get, he can go to the bathroom. <laughs> um... 
So yeah, just to reiterate that, it, it, it is kind of, uh, you've seen overalls like this and I bet you've gone, huh, I don't know about that. You know what I mean? Because it would be like this. Let's make them <laughs> very much like a Noompa Loompa, right? It would be like that. <laughs> this is a terrible drawing. See, see Shem? <laughs> Let me give it, let me give it half a chance if you're trying to do this. Let me make it more flattering, okay? It's just kind of wide. I keep accidentally undoing it. So that would be, you can't have a pockets because there's no seam for it to go to, right? But you could do, a, you know, like a, like a cutaway pocket, which if you're in the guild and you're in the journeyist or master group, you have a, a whole pocket thing you can do. And I would say you could do the cutaway. Um, I think that, that those would look like, this is starting to look like those knit overalls. I cannot think of where I know about those. If it's... I don't know. This is looking like a Teletubby outfit. Um, <clears throat> what other? You could just do patch pockets, you know. So just remember that. Let's see. We have this, this. All right. We got a plan? We like this? We don't know our distance here for these pockets down on the leg yet. Um, I think that's something like, and the hammer loop, like I don't know right here how far down that'll be. So I'll figure that out maybe in process and then um, measure him. You did, Malin, that's awesome. Those are so fun. And like this pair here, she uses a patch pocket, right? She does, there is a waist seam here that it goes to. Um, and you don't have, oh, you can't even see that. I'm so sorry. Um, you can't really, um, well, oh, I'm sorry, not zoom. Wrong thing. I ha have the brightness pulled up. So right here, see how these are a patch pocket. So you could do something like this. And you know, even more interestingly, you can turn the top of this. This is also in the pockets thing. This is just a, a large patch pocket. I think that's what I called it. Um, and it, you can turn this part into a belt loop as well. And that would be very reminiscent of the Blanca flight suit. Oh, maybe they did Elena. Okay, let's, um, let's, okay, let's see. I don't know what my, me and my computer looks like. Oh, there we go. Let's look up some overalls. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, um, Get rid of that so you don't have to see this over here. Wait. Aren't you looking at my, you're looking at my computer, right? Yeah, okay. Why did that all of a sudden not look like that? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, so you see, look, so <clears throat> this is a seam right here, blending in with the center back here. By the way, no waistband. Let's see, is there a waistband in the front? Yeah, see, so there's a waist seam here, right? But not in the back, so that's an option. We could just put this waistband in the back, I mean the front only. So let's look at this right here. So. This is top stitching. Yeah. And this is a seam here, right? G 
gave us a better look. Like this is all one piece, isn't it? There's a seam here. And so this piece goes under to there. Well, we'll figure out our own. All right, let's, let's draft. Um, I don't know how to use my thing here. Okay, here we go. Yeah, right, Shim? I've been doing that a little bit lately. Oh, <laughs> you're not <nuts> serving me. <laughs> Danny, exactly. Yes, exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to the pattern drafting, or the pattern table, and then we will start drafting. I'll bring this over there too. And then I'll show you the fabric I got. I'm, I'm doing kind of a, a Carhartt-ish color canvas. You know, that kind of orangish brown. Oh my God, I hate moving this camera. It makes me so nervous. I'm gonna pull everything down. That's not my usual angle, is it? <laughs> okay. Let's turn on this light over here, see what happens. Ooh, ooh. I really need to, like every few months, I need to kind of adjust my setup <clears throat> because we change things and then I don't remember to change. I don't remember to update my setup. Not that you care about that, but I do. Okay. We got everything on here, right? We have our Back strap, 29 inches, hammer loop, bib. Look, I wrote no coin, double pocket, reinforced knee. Um, what is this right here? 14 inches. 34 up there. Oh, and I got my bib width there as well. You might want to get the bib width across the front. Right, let me get my mouse. I have this vibration of something over here. Every time I walk by, it makes me sound like an elephant when I walk by. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, so you can see my computer screen because I didn't move that camera, there we go. Okay, so these are the overall clasps I'm gonna be using. I just got some Dritz plain old overall clasps and I got the one and a quarter inch width. I think it only came wider and I thought that sounded a little bit too wide. So one of one little cool thing I've seen um, and I, um, Mullins made these, what, what's it called? Um, it's those, the overalls by, I think it's, they're called Ready to Sew is the pattern company. And they use a really wide elastic at the top of the back straps there, the part I was just fiddling with, trying to remember how that sews together. Um, and I think that's a really clever way to get some comfort and movement when you're moving around. Um, you might uh, plan for that and try and find your elastic so that it's going to blend well with the width of your strap and also the color of the elastic for your fabric. So just think about that. And then here is my canvas here. It looks a little bit like a sweet potato on camera, <laughs> but you get the idea. I found my daughter's old uh, volleyball knee pads. So I think I'm gonna save these for when I make myself some gardening overalls. Partner, thank you. 
yeah, exactly. I offered that to him, but we didn't really think it was that necessary. And I wasn't sure if I had uh, elastic that width. But like say you've made the free range slacks by So How 7, that comes, that pattern requires a pretty wide elastic. So maybe you have a little leftover from some, a project like that and because you wouldn't need much. I think that if you just have like a little six inch piece or so on the back straps there, that would be enough. So it can't be too short because you want a little bit of give. I, I would think in that five to six inch length. I don't know what that one requires, but it's just an idea. All right. These are the pattern pieces I have. So I have my back and I have traced it onto some paper here. Make sure you trace your grain line and any other sewing markings that you might want. Like for the back here, I traced the pocket placement here and the yoke at the back. And then my grain line is here. You can't see it because it's perforated because I used a tracing wheel. And then I think here is my pocket. He likes the size of the pockets of this jean, so we're just gonna stick with those for the back. And then I have my front. This red is all, I'm gonna take all that off. Cause I had adjusted his pants after I made them and I never went back and fixed the pattern. <laughs> hey Rachel. Oh, I, oh my gosh, Rachel, I can so relate to this. I always call that like, um, it's like when you're dreading anything, I'll have this like pile of things I need to fix and then it ends up taking me 15 minutes. So I always call that pile my 15 minute pile as a reminder, once you get down to it, it's not gonna take long. It's not as bad as you think. It did real, four inches, but you think you think, yeah. So the smaller, it's like with anything stretchy, the smaller the amount, the smaller the stretch you're gonna get. So if you have a garment with lots of seams in it and it's stretchy, it's not gonna stretch as much unless it was one continuous piece of fabric, right? So, all right, and so here's my front. This is what it looks like. It has the built-in fly shape and I've also traced this fly piece or the stitching here and my front pockets, right? This pattern, if you have this pattern, it might look a little different because this was before it came out. All right, so I'm gonna move these. The other pieces I've got set aside are this yoke because I'm gonna need to marry it to the pattern. I have my fly facing. Here's my waistband, it's just folded up. Pocket bag. And I thought I had the pocket facing piece. Yep, I do, it's right here. I'm gonna change some of these and then the back pockets. So those are my pieces that I have that I'm using from this pattern. So if you have similar pattern pieces that you want to not forget, I would pull them out. <laughs> right? Oh my gosh, Shem, so, so true, yeah. All right, um, will you guys forgive me? I'm gonna go use the restroom really, really quick because I drank a ton of water before I started, so. So just, how about I put it on camera change screen? I'm gonna do that so that if anyone joins, just tell them what's going on, I'll be right back. Let's do this. <laughs> we'll talk amongst ourselves. Thank you, thank you. 
All right, where, where are we at here? Pattern table, shebang. Okay, let's move some of these weights. We got far too many of them. Put those in there. We're gonna get ready. Clear the decks. So I'm gonna put a little weight on top of these pattern pieces so they don't fall off. I think I can print this out, um, this um, sketch. Let's see if I can. Wait, how do I do that? Can't I, um, can't I just print this out? Wouldn't that be cool? I think I put it on a, um, oh gosh, I'm kind of scared what, never mind. <laughs> I was kind of scared, like what pictures are my thing? It's usually just pets. Oh, here we go, look at that. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. Let's see if it works. You're, <laughs> are, you, are you, Rachel? You just cut out two back left legs, Libby. Oh, I'm sorry. You're trying to place your pieces probably. I can relate to this. Come on, print. All right, so my first steps. I think are, um, I'm gonna marry the yoke to the piece here. So let's add a little piece of paper. I could leave the yoke. I don't think that's a bad thing. I just don't think it's entirely necessary because we don't really need any contour back here. A yoke is usually a way to basically get rid of a dart, you know? This pattern only has three eighths seam. So I'm gonna do a little three quarter inch overlap. And I think I'm actually just gonna lay it on there. Even if it kind of uh, straightens out that seam there, that's okay. We're trying to get rid of it. So let's draw it in here. We're not too worried about losing it because we might actually make it a little bit bigger. All right, so we can set this pattern piece aside. Ooh, look. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I've done that before, but I did a whole complicated thing where I like uploaded it to my computer, went to a folder, got, went to my computer, then I printed it and it was, uh, and I printed it on vellum for uh, top stitching. I didn't know I could just do it straight from the freaking app. This is exciting. Look at how nice that black line is. Ooh, this is so exciting. Okay. <laughs> Let me just geek out a little bit. I'm not that techie. Okay, so I think we're gonna need some more paper in general back here. Let's look at our front. It's more accurate to do a very long ruler, but I'm just tracing my Grain line that is on here, I transferred it and I just hadn't written it on there. All right. So for the front, I think I'm gonna leave it for the most part a lot like this. Let's place this, let's think about where this placement of this pocket's gonna be. I just wanna kinda think about it because we did the um, cargo pocket of the Wardrobe by me shorts too. Oh, is that the um, Love Notions? I am. Oh my gosh, well, how'd that happen? How'd that happen? How long have I been on there? When did that happen? I saw myself, okay, I'm gonna, did I just bonk it? I'm gonna get rid of that. Look at that. 
Isn't that cool? I swear I saw this on the screen. I'm sorry. All right. <clears throat> Okay, let me think about this. So I think I'm gonna give him a little bit of ease. Do I wanna give him, I wanna give him a little bit, yeah. So I think I'm gonna add like two inches in circumference. And that means just adding a half inch to my side seam here. I'm just gonna kind of blend it in like this. I'm gonna put an X through the line I don't want. And I also will start trimming stuff off so I don't get confused. We don't need to see it if it's going to distract us. And then if you need to, you can even go one step further and cover up old lines like this with a piece of paper. I do that all the time. Yeah, I know the stand and the collar are all in one on that. But you know what's really interesting about that pattern is the fact that the other views have a stand only. You know what I mean? Have you seen that? The um, it's I don't know why the collar stand would be separate, or it would be built into the collar if you could just you know leave off the collar to make that view. I don't know. You just have to get over the fact about how much tape I use. I use a lot of tape when I'm doing pattern drafting. All right, there's my new line. Blend this in and we have to remember that we did this with the pocket. And so what we can do is move our pocket opening over like this, because we don't need this pocket to opening to get bigger. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. We can just use it, you know what I mean? almost left that out for this reason and then I was like nah it'll be fine as soon as you tell yourself that it's not fine you know all right so let's move this over I'm gonna move this pocket opening this way I don't have to change any of my pocket pattern pieces if I just move the pocket opening back to its original size I just dropped something I felt it hit my foot I think it was my pen like my Sharpie. Oh, here it is. I was walking up the stairs today. I have a really long dress on today. It's like covered up with my, my um, sweater. <laughs> but um, I was walking up the stairs out there and I stepped on the front of my dress holding all my stuff and I heard a rip, but I never found what ripped. <laughs> I was like, oh no. I'm like, is it like the center bag? Is my butt hanging out? You know? <laughs> All right, so now let's do the same to the back. And we're gonna do things like true up this side seam front to back eventually as well. You can see I'm just kind of eyeballing it, blending it in with this line. You have a long way to go, so it's pretty easy to get it blended in there. We don't want this or this or this or this, just to make sure. I'm gonna cut off this hem here. We'll cut off this. And we'll cover up our old line because we like ourselves. We don't need to make ourselves kind of crazy. All 
before there was computer patterns and, and a pattern drafter had to do all their patterns on paper, um, it was very, 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 very frowned upon to use um, white out. And they actually have lots of different colors of white out for different color papers, right? And mostly you're using like a, a buff color, uh, like a um, like an off white color, and it'll match the pattern paper, the oak tag, whatever you call it. Um, so it was really rare that you were allowed to use it, but in some cases you would. And um, I used to have every color of <laughs> white out. <laughs> okay, so we have our back here. We don't care about all that. We're gonna leave our pocket placement even though we've added our yoke because that's exactly where that pocket goes. And then let's add a piece of paper back here. I know I have one somewhere. I have another piece of paper. Maybe I cut it up and used it. Hmm. This might be a little loud, sorry. Add this to the back for the bib or the back bib. Um, well, what do you mean by my own pattern? Like I still couldn't sell it because I used someone else's to start. Like that is very much a no-no. I, you know, one of the things I can't stand about that projectors for sewing Facebook group is like there is like it's a really shocking when I see people say I just don't want all these patterns anymore can I just you know sell them and you can't you can't sell a pdf pattern it's like against copyright stuff but people are really um dig their heels in about it and it's like oof <laughs> That's tricky stuff. <laughs> okay. I don't really think of this as a hack, I guess, either, Shem. Only because it's I'm not changing the original garment, an aspect of the general gar the original garment. <clears throat> if I was making these jeans into shorts and adding color block and um, maybe a ruffle at the bottom, then I would call it a hack. But the fact that I'm changing them into something completely different, maybe that's kind of stretching the word uh, hack. I mean, you are definitely hacking it. Yeah. That's not even the leg. Well, all I did was, that right there is a fitting change, right? I'm tapering the leg and shortening it when, where that red line was. So that's a fitting issue, you know, like not an issue as in uh, negative against the pattern, but how my husband likes his pants to fit. He doesn't like a really, really full leg. And um, they, these are very full legged. Um, and there's, uh, they're pretty long too. They're like three inches too long for him. He's about five, uh, seven or eight, I think. Five, eight, five, nine. I don't actually know. Adding a bib, yeah. Yeah, right, Nancy, I know. Yeah, I was like, oh man, this is probably very common that people think that. It's like, eek. Okay. So here's our front. So let's just kind of fold this up to get it out of the way. This is, I'm just gonna fold the pant here. Yeah. No, I didn't think you were thinking that, Shem, but I definitely like to say that because <clears throat> I have been accused of that, that um, just by live streaming um, projects with you guys, I have been accused by more than one pattern company that they absolutely under no circumstances want me sewing their item. <laughs> I was like, what? Why? 
I don't want you giving away my pattern. I don't like that you're doing any of that. And I was thinking, how, how am I doing that? I would never do that. <laughs> people, there's like a hundred videos online about your garment that people have sewn, but I just don't stream them because I'm like, fine, bye. Um, learn, learn your copyright, people. It makes me really um, angry. <laughs> I'm like, because I'm offended. It's like when you're a pattern drafter in the garment industry and you're doing it freelance, the thing you get asked so often is, how do I know you're not going to steal my designs? I got that asked that so many times. And a lot of times I'd say, I'll hire, I'll sign an NDA if you really want, if you really want. But um, there's problems with NDAs as well. And a lot of them will say things like, well, I don't want you sewing any competitors. I'm like, nope, can't do that. Um, or, or drafting for competitors because there were some times I actually was drafting for competitors, but neither of them knew and I wasn't using one for the other. Their stuff's so different. I don't think people realize that, you know, more than one. Yeah, more than one. <laughs> one of them ended up going through with it, but it left a kind of a bad taste in my mouth that they would assume that. And the thing was their pattern, by the way, wasn't even an original idea and that really bugged me I was like wait this particular thing has been out in the world and I, and even like this a variation on this item is free in certain blogs um so I don't know why yeah yep that's it Libby no no, Malin, they think I'm t t giving them the pattern pieces the way. I pay for almost every pattern, Danny. <laughs> I've, I can count how many patterns I've been given for free, so whatever. All right, so what's the waistband width on this pattern? Yeah, it's honestly just not even worth, like, worrying about because, like... This is the thing you have to understand is that just because someone does something professionally doesn't mean they're a professional. <laughs> and it also doesn't mean that they're trained in that, that they have experience in that, that they've worked for other people doing this before they started their own business. And that is perfectly fine. However, some of us have. <laughs> so, um, and I would never ever give away pattern pieces I, you know, so, all right, so this waistband is, it's like a little over two inches wide, um, minus seam allowance, so it is like one and five-eighths of an inch. Like that right there, someone could be offended, the fact that I just said that the waistband is one and five-eighths of an inch, you know? I'm giving it away. <laughs> All right, so if you have this little space missing here and you're kind of like, I don't really know what that shape is, you kind of don't. So it's good to, let's see, how does this go? This is, oh, it goes like this. Okay, so why is that so angled? I mean, I did add I added a little there, but not much. All right, so we're just gonna line this up here and fill it in. Remember, we added a little bit to our out seam. Oh, I don't really like that though. I'm just gonna fill it in myself <laughs> like this. There's a hole in my paper right here, so I'm like trying to draw around the hole. <laughs> okay, so we have, we're just kind of looking for our waistband right now. I'm just drawing it onto the pattern, right? And I think that I'll probably use the waistband, but I'm gonna make a piece that only goes across the front and that's it. <laughs> yeah, it's so true, Elaine. Hey, Ray, how's it going? Yeah, that's the thing is like, they don't, and they, and you know what? It's, that's fine. You know, I always had a saying when I had my last business, when someone would say something like, oh, I could make that myself, or 
um, $68, that's so expensive. Rather than like getting hurt, I mean, it still bugged me, right? Where I'm still human. I would tell myself, you know what? That's just not my customer. That is totally fine. That is not my customer. Who is my customer? Who am I trying to talk to? And then it just made me try and do better, right? It just tried to make me identify that. Who is my customer? And that's what I tell myself when I get that kind of Instagram direct message. <laughs> I literally, you guys, like I used to get so excited when I get an Instagram direct message, especially if it was for a patent company, and now I dread it. Every time I see I have a direct message, I'm like, who is it? <laughs> it's rarely anything um, funny. Although Sydney the other day sent me a really funny cat um, thing after we were talking about how is it really real that cats are just all over the surfaces of my house, you know, she sent a really funny one. So I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, I think I got this kind of off right here. So one and five eighths is what I said, right? No, so it's two inches, one and five eighths. Yeah, so one and five eighths is down here. Yeah, 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 that's right, that's right, that's right. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm measuring from the seam line of these pants right here, which I've drawn on a really small Sharpie, sorry. I'll do it a little bigger for you. But this is the seam line. I don't usually draft with such huge markers. This, this pant has 3 8 inch seam allowance. This is really small for jeans making. And then, um, so it's good to note that because I almost forgot and I almost did, um, I thought it was half inch or 5 8 So, all right, so now I'm just gonna draw in this waistband as if it's sewn on here. And I'm drawing a one and five eighths inch parallel line. And this would be the finished width, right? So this is the finished width of this waistband. This is still my cut line for this front right here. Okay. We're just going to try and come up with this bib shape now. This pen is funny. All right. So Let's tack this piece of paper. I'm just gonna use some removable tape. I have some pieces sitting right here too. This is perfect. I'm just gonna put some removable tape on here. And we're just gonna start trying to fill in the gaps here. So I'm gonna transfer my grain line down here onto this upper part here. This will be the bib. This pen is almost dead. So you know what we do? We throw it away. Okay, let's see if this one's better. All right. Now this right here, this line of the fly, or if you don't have a pant, you're not using a pant with a fly, that seam, center seam right here, you need that too. So we're gonna try and kind of carry this up here. And this is coming at an angle. I don't wanna go straight into the front like that. We're gonna try and straighten this out a little bit. So let's just kind of, wind it over a little bit towards me. Something parallel to that, I think is a, a good idea. <clears throat> yeah, that's a really narrow seam allowance. But do I play PC games? I don't, Carrie. Oh, Ray. Yeah, I could talk a lot about that. <laughs> it actually is true sometimes too. <laughs> the time I had a company, um, um, I had just drafted um, for one company a, um, a baby sling. And I did some really new things on it for the baby sling. And then I had an existing client say, Sammy, I have this idea for a new product. This is a really good client of mine, someone I had really loved working with. And she said, um, I wanna do a baby sling. And I was like, oh, okay. I didn't say, that's great. I just finished drafting one because you don't say that. That's not okay. Um, and um, she said, I'm gonna send you some samples she usually used to send me samples that were like partially made things, things you were just kind of noodling on. Maybe they were like hacked together, you know, kind of like what your prototypes look like. It's very common. And I was at the post office and I thought it was fabric 
from someone else. Uh, and I opened it and I was standing there at the post office and she had sent me these exact sling I had made for another client. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is not good. That was a kind of a pickle. And it, it was the first time I had to be like, I had to call her and say, I can't do this job for you. I just got your package and I can't do this job for you. And she was like, what do you mean you can't do this job for me? And I was like, I can't do this job for you. And she was like, and? And I was like, I can't do this job for you. <laughs> and then she, she had to figure it out on her own. I can't, I couldn't say I had signed an NDA and I just was like, I just can't do this. I have to send this back to you immediately. Yeah, it was so, she was about to steal my design with me <laughs> doing the pattern work. <laughs> anyway, all right, I'm making sure that this front, I'm just gonna make it parallel to this grain line here because the thing is, we're gonna make a bib that's on the fold. So this has to be straight and parallel to the grain line, all right? So this is our center front right here and it's lining up with the center seam of our pants here. All right, and then we know that I had wanted the bib to be 14 inches above the waistband. So that is right here. This is why when I was saying, wait, is that my, is that my line? Oh, this is my line right here, okay. Remember when I was saying, so I know you don't know all these measurements and it's a little scary to kind of try and decide on them, but this is why you wanna really kind of push yourself to figure out some of these measurements. Some of them like, I'm not sure where I'm gonna put that hip pocket, right? But that's okay, we kind of know the dimensions of the pocket and that's helpful. Um, but something like this, like where you want this bib, <clears throat> it can be like within an inch, you know, you don't have to be exact, but you kind of want a ballpark because then it just drafts itself, all right? Yeah, she figured out it was mine, Malin. It was an interesting thing. She was amazing. She was like, you know what? Um, good job. <laughs> um, and uh, let's come up with our own design. I'm like, I'd love to do that for you. <laughs> you know, so she was uh, gracious enough to realize <laughs> the awkward position she put me in. <laughs> okay. So the top of my bib, I forgot to write this on my little iPad drawing, was eight and a half right there. So we're gonna go four and a quarter over. All right, uh, the other thing I want to make a note of is the fact that this pattern piece down here has seam allowances built in, but up here I've been drafting as if there's no seam allowance on this pattern yet, right? Because it's on the fold right here and I'm on this seam line here. So, you know. Remember, we still add seam allowance to this area here. All right, and so I also had discussed or just discovered that he wanted it to be about eight inches up here. This is one measurement I kind of doubt. All right, so this, this edge right here, this has seam allowance. So let's just draw it in so we remember. We also might want to take the opportunity to um, change the seam allowance. All right, so let's add seam allowance to this piece here, three eighths and three eighths, whoops, right? And now we have the beginnings of how our armhole is gonna look, right? Here we go. Just kind of connect the dots. And there's our bib, bib. Bib is such a good word. Okay, so here's our center front. This right here is on the fold and our pocket's gonna be there. So then let's transfer this waist seam to this bib piece here. And I'm gonna move this piece of paper out of the way real quick so I don't um, like draw onto that piece and get confused. All right, so we're gonna draw this on there like that. Okay, and let's draw this line here. So now I don't have really a, a right angle right here, so I'm gonna change that. 
like that. Just a right angle right here at this juncture. Now I'm going to add seam allowance to that edge. Like that. All right, and now we have our, our bib. So let's take a look at it. See you later, Sydney. Oh, and good luck. Yeah, have a great vacation. I hope I, I hope you heard me. <laughs> She's one day away, right? That's what she said. Um, okay, so we got a lot of lines on here. Especially this is kind of a confusing one here. So um, I'm going to maybe take my black pen here and, and outline the, the lines I like right now. Okay. I'm trying to decide what seam allowance do I want on this? Three eighths, in my opinion, is, um, it's a little hard when you're doing wovens. Let's make sure we have a right angle right here. Cause remember this is on the fold. Granted, a two inch ruler isn't the best for doing right angles. I know that. Um, but you know, let's think about like what seams we have. So I still might want to do something like flat fell the end seam because that would be kind of comfortable, right? It would be lower profile. And this is something he's like working out in the yard in and it is kind of a stiff canvas, right? And the rest of this though, like, how do I want to finish this bib? Do I want to line it? Or do I want to hem it or face it? I love the idea of lining it. I thought it was Thursday too, actually. That's funny. I had to remind myself. All right, so I'm gonna cut this out. Make sure you have a right angle right here. I don't usually cut out with a rotary knife. All right, so now we have this. And so when I have pieces on the fold, this is what I do. That is my, hey, Sarah me, sometimes you're kind of dumb and you forget that that pattern piece is on the fold. <laughs> this right here just kind of reminds me. <laughs> All right, so we have our bib, bib. Let's find, let's do our, our front waistband. Cause look at this, we have this piece right here. So let's just, let's just steal that, right? Steal it from ourselves. <laughs> um, I want one piece of paper though. I don't want to, I don't like cutting these really long, narrow things on the fold because um, I'm, oh shoot. I'm just not very good at that. Nothing like dropping your scissors. It's just not very accurate. All right, so this right here, this little center line, that's our fold line. I'm just gonna trace it onto the paper. So do your best. You can use a, p a pen, like a straight pen. Oops. This thing doesn't go straight. <laughs> okay. Right? Yeah, Shem. Oh my gosh, me too. Um, that's kind of low. So I'm gonna raise it up a little bit. Low meaning on my paper. I'm gonna run out of, uh, of paper to do the seam allowance on. All right, so let's trace my line. Yeah, there, I don't use that little squiggly line for anything else. Um, and so it is my like little like, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> don't put that, don't cut two of that. <laughs> Okay. I'm kind of wish I would have decided on my seam allowance because I'm just continuing on with this 3 8 seam allowance and I'm not really that thrilled with that. 
All right, so I'm gonna cut this piece out. And I'm gonna measure my waistline here, which is it's like 10 and 5 eighths plus. And I'm gonna make sure that I've still got it in the right spot. I can kind of fudge that. Hey, Rebecca, how's it going? Oh, what started today, Margie? It's Wednesday, the BBC. Oh, cool. This is when you guys all start like going, okay, gotta go, it's on. <laughs> We're all jealous here in the States. I would love to watch that show. Wait, I didn't put this on the fold? Oh my gosh. You guys. What the heck? I didn't put it on the fold. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay, now I'm gonna staple it. If you staple things, it'll keep it a little bit more accurate, but make sure you do it in two different places at least. And uh, sometimes you should change direction of your stapler. So don't just do them both like that. Like do one um, going, you know, like perpendicular to the staples. Staples slide a little bit. That seems really picky, but trust me. <laughs> That's the funny, in interesting thing is like, I think those are the kinds of skills we lose because of computers is how to get straight things without using a computer. I can't really talk right now. <laughs> I, I tried so hard last year, Danny. I tried every method I found and people really helped trying to find a way. If you're in Canada or Australia, there are ways. Anywhere but the US, honestly to find it, you can probably find it illegally though. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know, Shem, I'm gonna add it. I think I'm gonna add some seam allowance, don't you think? All right, so here's my waistband. I'm going to mark the center here like this. And I have a notcher, but you don't have to have one. Just something right there to kind of remind yourself that you want a notch here at the center. And you'll want one here at the center of the bib at the bottom, not the top, Does that doesn't matter. All right, so we have our waistband. Let's do a small reset of tools. And now let's work on, so let's get our, um, let's get our, our rest of our pieces down here. I'm not, I'm gonna change the shape of this pocket facing here. And I actually don't really need this. Let's find a piece of paper. Here we go. Tracing on my cut lines. This is the cut line. This is the cut line. This right here is the opening right there. We, we need that. Yeah, I don't know, Carrie, if there really is a way, unless they've changed it this year. I don't know, is there a streaming service that has that? I don't think so. So this was a cut edge, that was a cut edge, and this is the opening. And so think of this part extending past this opening, how much, however much you want. So, you know, the seam line is like right here right? So you definitely want it to be at least an inch past that, right? That's, that's probably sufficient. 
So go an inch past that seam line. This is why I love see-through rulers because you can just draw parallel lines like this really easily, right? And I don't have any seam allowance on this edge because usually what I do is just overlock that top stitch that onto my pocket bag and then we're good to go. All right, and then that brings me to my pocket bag because this shape is a little different than the original. So let's transfer this top corner right here to our pocket bag. I forgot to do the seam allowance. Let's see if I can get it on here. Your seam allowance on this pocket facing is the same as your pant if they were sewn together. Um, and if, if you're in the guild and you saw uh, Shem's recent, um, sorry to put you on the spot, Shem, but he has a pair of shorts he's sewing right now <clears throat> in a plaid and he put this piece on the bias. It looks really, really cool. All right, so we have that. And now we can leave this piece as is, the back pocket. But this piece right here, I think I'm gonna have to trace. If you're using um, an existing pattern, you know, in your stash that's a PDF, you don't have to trace off the pattern pieces. You could just print them out again. <laughs> I thought about that after I was done tracing. I was like, oh, I could have just printed out this PDF, but I didn't want all the pieces. Um, where are my scissors? They're right here. No. Ouch. Night, Molly. How's it going? Uh, how's it going? Uh, have a nice night. I did add um, uh, Martina. I did add that on the waistband piece. I'm sorry, is she saying that over and over? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So I'll show you what I did. So this piece right here, if you can see this black line, this was my cut line right here. I drew in this waistband that's gonna go across the front um, and it is the actual piece. And so, um, and then I did my bib. So when I created this waistband piece, I added all the seam allowance to the top edge. I cheated because I didn't have enough paper. That's it. So there is three eighths and three eighths, so three quarters of an inch. This is my finished waistband width. And that's why I was checking to make sure when I measured down here that it was the, the right measurement. Because it's you're not supposed to do that, but you but I did. <laughs> but there it is. So if I met, overlap at the seam line right here. There's three eighths above that line there. We're good. Sorry, I missed your, I don't want you to panic. <laughs> okay, so let's just copy this piece and then we're going to, we still need to draft our bib pocket. We need to draft are, why is this at an angle like that? Huh. How did I not notice this when I was sewing it? That that doesn't match. Hmm. That makes me wonder. <laughs> oh, I know you want sewing drama. <laughs> okay. I'm going to use something like a 
pencil, if I have one that's sharp enough, here we go. I'm just going to trace the general shape of this for now and then we're gonna we're gonna transfer our actual markings to this. Yeah, it was Martina. <laughs> it was okay, Ray. I understood. Okay, so I'm looking, I can see my pencil drawing. Sorry, this is very confusing looking because I have pattern pieces on this. So we're just going to look at lining up this pocket opening to the opening on the pattern here, like this. And now let's draw, I'm transferring the line of my pants here onto this pattern piece here. I'm, I'm doing it from the top only because I can see it better like that. Okay. All right. So when I draft this pocket bag, I do like a hook right here too. Um, I ha still have my circle here to cut, but we're gonna cut both folded sides first because they're the exact same shape. They fold together and they need to line up when you go to sew it. That's why I was kind of puzzled why that pocket bag did not match just now. I can't remember if I had trouble getting it to work or if it lays funny, but that would definitely lay funny. All right, so now we have both sides of our pocket, and now I can cut out this shape right here. There we go. And now we have <clears throat> a pocket bag that's gonna sew here, like this, right? Like that, okay. Now this piece I could just photocopy. <laughs> I don't really need to trace that one off. All right, so what's left on the front is the bib pocket, the hammer loop, and the side pocket, right? Um, let's uh, draft our back, since that way if you're waiting on that part, you can do your pockets probably on your own. You don't need me. Hi, Mohair, how's it going? Yeah, no worries. You can come whenever you like. <laughs> and it's available for rewatching. It'll upload. Doesn't seem like the captions or the chat shows up right away though, which is kind of frustrating for people. All right, so here's our back. So what do we think? I think that we should do this without the back waistband and do the continuous bib like we were seeing in the photos. I don't have quite as many measurements back here though. Where's my, my little, um, Cheat sheet. Anyone see it? With my purple writing. What the heck? Where is it? Um. Pocket lining that, is this it? No. Is it under my iPad? How much do you spend, how much time do you spend watching me look for things I've lost? It must be on the other side of the floor. Dagnabbit. I need that little piece of paper. I kind of remember it. it was like 29 and a half inches, I think. I think 
I do, Shem. I think I do. And thankfully, he's pretty small, so I think I can get them um, going across. So, <clears throat> oh yeah, Tam, that's right, it's your name. Okay, so from the back, I wrote down that I wanted it 29 inches from the top of the front bib from here, from here, going over to the back waist. So I didn't figure out where I need that to stop though, at the top up here. So what we can do is lay down, is this really one of those patterns where you get a right leg and a left, a right, you get a left front and a right back. Oh man, I hate that. Okay. Where's my bib? I really hate how much stuff I have here. Here's my bib. Okay. <laughs> we could just lay it on top. We'll just transfer some measurements here. <laughs> no, I mean, how much time do you watch me was looking for things? <laughs> oh man. Okay. So let's lay our side seams together here. So I have my front on top of my back right now. All right. We're not doing a final out seam. That'll be fine. But we are going to transfer where this front bib is in relation to the back here, just as like a guide. So I'm going to lay this front bib on here at the seam line, which is right there and right there. Okay. And then we need the um, underarm to match, right? So here's my front. So we're going to trace this onto the back. That seems really wide or long, tall, doesn't it? All right, and then our bib is like right here. Okay, so we got that. Maybe I should put that in the, the stream is starting soon. Make sure you like the <laughs> video. That just seems so weird to say. Okay, so let me draw this on here. So this is just a guide, right? We have our front here. And so this I think is where you're going to find that maybe you wanna do some fitting, right? <laughs> because we're going to in include this as all one piece. So we don't have to worry about this being cut on the fold up here or anything because you, you can't, you have to have your rise, right? So let's just kind of, let's continue our, our grain line, okay? I just want it as a, a, a parallel guide here. We're not doing this back yoke. And I'm just going to kind of draw this straight back like this. So here's my rise. And I'm just going to continue, as, continue it up. And I'm going to make it roughly parallel to that grain line. Like that. We know we have to do this juncture here because it sews to the front, right? That's non-negotiable. And now we need to figure out what's going on in the back. So let's see. If my front bib was here... I think the back comes up a little bit higher. It, it might get cut down here where the strap attaches, but I'm gonna give myself some space. So I'm not, sometimes I feel like I make um, pattern drafting choices based on how much paper I have and that's not a good idea. Give yourself all your paper so that you're not doing that. <laughs> I know, Dan, 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 exactly. And you know, a lot of people are funny about their 
watch history, which you can make private, but even though um, it's private, they don't like contributing to the algorithm. They don't like a record in their thing so that it clutters it up. You know what I mean? Um, and um, I got over that because I was kind of the same way. I say if you're spending any time on YouTube, it's a good thing to customize some of your profile because you probably don't realize how much you can customize. And if you don't want it public, and trust me, I'm sure there's people that don't realize that when they're saving a video of someone else's, that it shows up as that they saved it. So you might wanna look at that because you can make it private and you can also make playlists. Even if you're not a streamer or uploading video on YouTube, you have a lot of controls and they're really easy to access in your profile on YouTube. And you can create playlists. So if you're like, um, these are the sewing people I follow. These are the people who do gardening I follow. Like you, when you share one or save one of their videos, you can save it to one of your playlists you've created. Um, maybe you, you know, have a kid who has difficult hair and you're always looking at videos, you know, so that it's separate. It most likely is, Carrie. <laughs> All right, so I need to decide. So we, we want this much narrower back here, right? So let's do something like that. We, we probably want this at the very top to be, I would say around four inches wide, right? So that means this has to get pretty narrow here, like all the way to that. Eek, all right? And we have seam allowance built on here, so let's actually account for that, so. We'll put seam allowance on both edges. And so this is like our cut width right here that we're going for, all right? Something like that. Yeah, that's how I feel too, Nancy, to a degree. <laughs> yeah, Carrie, <all> right? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not that shim. I just feel like I understand that. And you know, likes are really great for my channel. They don't influence YouTube. They influence viewers. It's very different. <laughs> I am here for that. I'm here for people who want to be here. <laughs> so, um, your watch time influences YouTube's algorithm. If you don't want to see videos on um, people doing stunts into jello pits, don't watch videos like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, it's your watch. What you watch is what influences YouTube, not what you like. Liking influences people to go, oh, a lot of people have liked this, so maybe it does have what I'm looking for. And that helps me. That's why I like, that's why likes are good. I used to never tell people to like. And then when I realized that that is kind of a valuable thing for other people, only if you like it, right? So yeah, same with timestamps. Having timestamps is really, really helpful because say you're searching um, how to install attack button and before there were timestamps and chapters and videos, you might get suggested a video that's 20 minutes long and you're like, oh, I just need to know how to do this. Now, if someone timestamps it, installing the tack button, you're only gonna be recommended that one and a half minute section. And we thank the YouTube overlords they did that, right? So. Oh, really, Carrie? I think that's only on your phone. All right, all right, all right, let's get this show on the road here. All right, so how do I want this to look? We're talking about this diamond, right? And we have our straps. So one of the trickiest parts about this little juncture with this back strap thing is the fact that um, this gets really, really, really thick. And if you've ever done the Yanta overalls, it's actually really hard, and so what I recommend doing is, if this is a little bit confusing for you, try to think of it less as a strap sewn here and a strap sewn here, but more like this. This is one strap going like this. 
And then the other strap is underneath it like this. That way you're only top stitching this down. You're not setting it in a seam because if you have to sew two straps right here and meet at this little point, that is really hard. It gets really thick and you can't, it's hard to maintain a point. So, oh, you can change that and say there, Elena is my, my Elena and Susie are like the two people I'm like, oh, I hope they chime in with tech stuff. <laughs> That's awesome, Elena. All right, so now I think I know what that shape is. And like Shim said, it's more like a, a house. And so it's more shaped like this. This right here, okay? And then that strap, we're gonna top stitch it down here. It's just gonna lay on top. Let me, I, maybe I could do like a little, this is gonna help me too. I'm gonna, um, I just need to do this so that, <laughs> I haven't, this is gonna, this is kind of embarrassing, but I haven't drafted overalls since I worked at, uh, I'm pretty sure at a children's wear company. <laughs> okay. So it's gonna go like, see these are my two straps, right? They don't go set in like this, they go like this. And then you can, is this, so this, if this goes like this, like that, right? You can just top stitch this over it. And so then say you have What would I do without scrap paper? Like this, okay. So here's our strap. We've sewn this strap. We sewed and turned the sides here. And then this is, this is raw. This is clean finished, clean finished, okay. <laughs> And then uh, clean finish, clean finish, raw. These are our straps. We lay them like this. We clean finish this top edge right here. Pretty sure. This is clean finish. These are the armholes, right? I, I might be wrong about this. I think I'm making it more complicated, actually. I'm gonna trim all this off just a second. And then you lay this on top. And then when you top stitch through this, that's how you get the diamond to catch in these two straps at the bottom. You actually might clean finish this to this edge. Shoot, I think I might have to go to the store and look at these. So you don't have all the bulk in one point. Exactly, Martina. Um, oh, is it is it easier to have a space like between these two? Well, this isn't gonna uh, matter because of the fact that they're just laying on top of each other. So while it looks like it's a V, it's really just two pieces creating a V. You would cut the rectangle straps and work backwards, right? Um, oh, Shem. Yeah, so you'd have like a long piece of fabric and then you're like, boop. <laughs> like that. Oh my gosh, I need water.
I'm alive. Sorry. <laughs> if you've been here long enough, you know I get tickles. All right. So this is what you're thinking, Shim. You're thinking like two straps or like one long one and then fold. I don't know. I think that's a really big piece of fabric. All right. <clears throat> Let's draft this point back here. And so where above my armhole here, I went, I went about 10 and a half inches. And then as far as this angle goes, if you were to draw a square like this, this point is two and a half inches down, or actually that red line is three inches right there. But what I would do is draw this onto another piece of paper and see it mirrored. So then you can see kind of what it looks like proportionally. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too, Shem. I think you might have bulk there. Cause you know, like if you sew and turn and clean finish these long edges, <clears throat> that means there's all that seam allowance there. And so when it's folded, it seems like it'll be thin, but I think it'll be too thick. I like that idea though. And in some fabrics you probably could. All right, so I'm going to look at what this looks like right now. Like this. <clears throat> Sorry, I get that tickle, you guys. Why is my phone going off? I turned it off. What the heck? Let's do this. Let's pretend, remember that this has seam allowance on it, right? So that is actually the center line. Let's put it on the fold. I just wanna see what it looks like, right? I'm going to sew and turn them like two layers of fabric, or you know what, you could hem them. That's actually something we should think about. This is kind of a sharp angle. I, I can already tell, I'm gonna do that. We should think about that because it has to go through the um, strap, the, 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 the hardware. You know? rid of all that. All right, so that's what my back's looking like right now. And then there would be a seam right here. <clears throat> and then we would see the diamond of my straps like that. You can have a lot of fun with this thing. Hey, Terry. Right, and so then my strap you know, underneath gets laid on like this and like this. I think you know what you could have you could have one be continuous with no seam there, but the other one you'd have to lay down. Dinner prep. I'm ready for lunch. <clears throat> okay. So let me um, change because I kind of did a different angle. I'm gonna cut this off so that I know that that's the one I want. And I'm going to just tape a little paper in here. <laughs> just so visually I see what's happening. <clears throat> mm -mm. All right, 
that's just the best I can do there. Okay. All right, and so right now this piece looks more like that. That's what my pattern piece looks like. <clears throat> Cajun chicken pasta cheddar biscuits. Oh my goodness. All right, so now for the strap. Let's get rid of this here. Make sure that your transition on your side seam is good. This seems still really high up to me. He didn't really, we didn't want deep, deep overall holes. It still seems like that seems so high up to me. And maybe it's just an optical illusion, like if this were the waistband, I don't know. It might be worth just cutting out some overall shorts for him. <laughs> okay. I think the one thing you will definitely probably have to try out is your straps though, so that you can see how they lay on the person. All right, let me get some paper here. You guys talking about food. All right, so let's measure here. I came up with I think it was 29, <clears throat> 29, 29 inches back strap from bib to waistband. So like this, I measured from the waistband, which on the back would have been more like, we'll kind of do it in the middle here. So here was the waistband seam plus the one and five eighths waistband right here, right? So this is the waistband. I measured from the top of the waistband as if it was sewn on the pants. So remember, these are jeans that I was measuring on him, right? And so then I went like this to 29 inches. So my strap isn't very long right now, okay? So let's just trace the shape here, okay? Remember it has seam, mine has seam allowance, so remember that, okay? Um, I'm gonna use some removable tape so that it stays there, all right? And then, no, we don't need that. All right, so we're gonna do this measurement again. So 29 inches would be about right here. And this is to the bit, top of the bib. Right, and we have hardware, so we're gonna have a, um, you know, here's the button and then the hardware around it, right? <laughs> That's the front, right? <laughs> I know, Terry. <laughs> Someday, man, that sounds so good. <laughs> that sounds amazing. All right, so this strap shape is gonna be, so remember this one goes that way and this one goes here like this. So let's do this. Let's do a perpendicular line to this juncture here. I just lost some of my tape. Y'all thought this was gonna be an easy pattern for me to draft, huh? Well, it's not. trying to find my edge here. I can barely see it because I've traced it. I'm just drawing a perpendicular line here. 
like that. And remember that this is the seam line. Seam line. Seam line, right? There's my strap. And then <clears throat> no, I don't want to tickle. <coughs> Man, I don't want to call this early. I'm going to do a perpendicular line here. So this is my, I'm looking at my finished spots here. So now I have this box here and this edge right here. <clears throat> I'm going to use a marker now so you can see. Just ignore this edge here. You're looking at your seam line, the finished spot. So this is the center back right here along this here. This is your center back. Okay. And I'm doing a perpendicular line to this opening here. And then there's my diamond. So now let's add some, oh, this is actually right here. This is the juncture right here. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I knew something was washed off. That's why I kept looking at it. I was like, what is going on there? All right, and so now we're gonna add our seam allowance. I'll do a different color. My seam allowance. I don't think I need any on this edge here. We're just going to do it on the long side. So I'm going to leave this like a raw edge right here. You can add it if you want, but you might be trimming it off later. We don't need this. All right. And so if we were going to do 29 inch right there, that leaves about for me about 14 inches and I want extra. So I think I'm going to do like 18 inches, an 18 inch strap from here. I feel like this might be the wrong um, angle, but that's okay. We're going to check it. Let's make this just an 18 inch block for now. <clears throat> Remember my strap hardware is one and a quarter inches wide. So um, how are you going to finish this edge? Are you going to sew and turn it? Are you going to line it? Are you going to hem it? Those are the things you need to think about with how it's going to go through your hardware. Hey, Michelle, how's it going? <laughs> so let's take this down um, evenly on either side and maybe I can get it back onto the paper. I don't know. Just tape it on there. <clears throat> um, oh wow, my whole tape dispenser is under there. So this is something that if I were drafting professionally, I would probably drape this part of it. I wouldn't draft it flat. So I'm giving you kind of a uh, starting point, um, but I would definitely try this out, you know? Because you never know, say the person you are drafting these for has very, very sloped shoulders or maybe very straight shoulders. They may come around and go to the button points here and they may stick up like this along the shoulders, right? Or maybe they're digging in along the side and kind of flaring out there. That's kind of when you want to work on the, the, the like angle, the shape. You may need to change the angle of this right here where it sews in um, or drape them onto the person and attach them back there and do some trimming. So just make sure that you work on this part of it. I'm still not sure how I'm going to, like. I, I think I want to line the straps. And I, I want to do that because I'm thinking that it might be thinner and cleaner rather than a hem. 
Oh my gosh, wow, Shem, that's awesome. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? Oh, you just made burrito bowl. Oh, I love burrito bowls. God, we haven't done that in a while. Okay, Nancy, have a good one. All right, so my strap is one and a quarter. I think that this being three eighths of inch seam allowance is gonna work well for my purposes because I wanna line it. So let's find the center here, which is like three and seven eighths. So almost two inches. I can straddle my ruler, put the two inches there. Um, I want it one and a quarter inches wide, which is like five eighths on each side, plus the seam allowance, which is three eighths. And so Basically, I want a two inch strap by the time I get here, like this. So maybe this is where you kind of work on some of the curve that you need, like this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, remember, you're looking at your seam line. Let's see if I can get this to be kind of a smooth transition here, like that. I have a little bit of that curve there, see that? Well, the, it looks like it's over curved though. You don't want this curve line to go past that, this finish line here. That's why I don't like curves. I hardly use them, I usually just eyeball it. Or I use my straight ruler, actually. All right, and then same here. Like that. Make sure you left enough for your um, strap to weave into the overall clasp and come back and for adjustment, all right? I think I've only given myself four inches, so maybe I'll do a, like two more inches. I can always cut it off, you know? When I'm doing the fitting, you know? So let's straighten this out. Make sure you have right angles when you get to the like edge there. All right, now let's lift this up and see what we got going on back here. Let's transfer that line I drew. I thought I used my, um, what you call it already, but I hadn't, this guy right here. Okay, so that is my pattern piece. Let me cut all this off so you can see it. So that's the strap there. Yep, I just did. I narrowed it down to two inches, Shim cut because it's a one and a quarter inch hardware width and um, I also th think that um, making having the three eighths inch seam allowance on the strap will be okay for this part of it I don't I think you're right though like I'm gonna need to add some seam allowance to the rest of the pants if I want to do any flat filled seams all right so if you want to hem these you, you can do that, you know, like you just need to make sure that your hem allowance is going to make sure that your strap lines up with the width of your center back piece here. All right, so this is my pattern piece. Right here, and then that's how it's gonna go. Right back there. Let's get rid of our removable tape. Okay, so all we're left right now with is uh, pockets. All right. Let's look at the um, cargo shorts. Where, where are those? It might be under, here they are. So I made these cargo shorts 
And I'm thinking that that might be a good position. You got the old fashioned metal ones twice, Margaret, for the, um, wait, what, here we got cool colors. Oh wait, I am missing what you guys are talking about. Oh, cool colors for the braces. <laughs> oh, you are from California? That's awesome. All right, so I'm just gonna look at the placement of the pocket. Let's see. There it is. <coughs> okay, Mohair, have a good class. Yeah, hopefully you can watch at double speed too. These drafting videos, a little more tedious. So this, this, pan, this short is really interesting in that it doesn't have a waistband, it has a waist facing, you see that? Um, so this is the top of the pants. So we'll just kind of measure down from the waistline there and it's 10 inches on the side there. That's all I needed. <laughs> So let's see, for the hammer loop, we want something like one inch wide finished, right? And if we were to, I have a hammer. <laughs> I wonder if I have a hammer loop on anything. So if I had to get the base of the hammer through a loop and it was sewn to something, Are hammer loops like? Do they go in and out from one point, or are they? Is it? Is it spaced? It's one point, right? And then what they do is they fold it like this, right? So that it can lay flush against the body too. I feel like it's separated. Am I right about that though? You guys are talking about food. I need help here. Let's look at the picture. <laughs> oh, I still have it up. I'm gonna look at it real quick. Hmm. Get your hand out of the way. Oh, it goes to the pocket. That's right. Okay. So it goes from the bottom of the back pocket to the side seam. Like that. So maybe we want something like and then it's like folded, right? And I, I don't know if it's folded again. Stack the loop, not overlap it. I think I know what you mean. Oh yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So I feel, feel like I've told you all this story so many times, um, but um, I'm very familiar with this loop <laughs> in some ways, like it ha I have a memory with it. So it goes like this, it goes like this and then goes over to the side seam like that, something like that. So when I was a kid, I was about, uh, I wanna say about 10 years old. Um, I used to hang out with my best friend Chris from Minnesota 
dad had moved to Orange County because he was hired to build the, at the time, new fantasy land of Disneyland. I lived on the, the block across the street from Disneyland. And she moved to our condominium co complex until they bought a house and we became best friends. And so she moved about like three miles away and I would go visit her and there was an elementary school like a few houses down and we would go and play at the elementary school and then walk back to her house. And um, at the time, there were these canvas pants that really popular looking like painter's pants. And so they had these exact pockets in the painter's loop on a kid's clothes, right? So it's not even like functional, but it was like a style and, you know, whatever. And so we were climbing the fence, a chain link fence. And at the top, I just jumped down. Like I was definitely like pretty, you know, active as a kid. So I jumped off the top of the chain link fence and that painter's loop caught on the top of one of those chain link um, points and I just stopped and I was hanging there by my loop of my pants pressed up against the fence like just suspended there because <laughs> I was so little, you know. And um, then my pants proceeded to rip completely in half really slowly so I was like <laughs> my friend is like <laughs> and my pants um, ripped from waistband to waistband and they were only connected at the waistband by the time I hit the ground and I had to walk back to her house that way and I remember being so mad at my mom for buying me underwear that had little blue hippos all over them and so embarrassed but that's my painter's loop story <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely something you would have seen in a movie. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh my gosh, we laughed so hard. All right, so here we go. You want it to stick out a little bit like that, right? So let's let's try like a eight inch cut loop. So we're gonna cut this loop two and three quarters of an inch wide by eight inches long. And then that'll make it finish one inch by um, like seven and a quarter. So that's it. Painter's loop, or ugh, I call it painter's loop, but we know what I mean. Okay, we got that done. Now we need our other, we need our bib and our side pocket. He said three inches finished wide, so we're going to cut it three and three quarters. We're going to draft with our seam allowances here. Um, he wanted it eight inches on the tall side, so we're going to add three eighths of an inch at the bottom, and then we're going to add three quarters of an inch for a hem, so we're up to nine and an eighth right there. That's at an angle too, so. So let's see, let's try something like that angle, like that. <coughs> oh yeah, totally Shem, that'd be awesome. All right, so this angle here is, if I were to draw a straight line across, that is two and three eighths inch down to that point there. And then I've added a, three quarter of an inch hem, and there's three eighths of an inch going around for seam allowance. So this is what it's looking like. You're gonna need a shaped hem here. It's not as critical on this side here, but this side right here, when this is folded over, this edge, when this is folded on this fold line, won't reach there. So the easiest way to do this is just to fold your piece of paper. We're not doing anything professional right now and we can fold this paper. So if you were doing this on a, a hard paper, something that doesn't fold very well, then, then you kind of got to figure it out. But we don't need to today because we're just using regular soft paper. So we're going to trim it. And I can see my lines there, my long sides of my pocket. So that's what I'm cutting on right now. Like that. And now you can see I have this little hook for my hem there so that it gets caught 
in the seams. If I didn't do that, my hem would be way out there and it would be really weird. Okay. So this is our knife pocket, I guess. I didn't even know he carried a knife. <laughs> All right, and so then he wanted a little pocket like we saw. So we're just gonna do like maybe um, like a four inch tall pocket finished. So what we want is a pattern piece that will be hmm, five and an eighth by three and three quarters. I'm just gonna draw it. Five and an, let's do it down here in this weird piece of paper. We can just trace the bottom of this. It's not very accurate, but it's okay. This doesn't have to be perfect. I hate drafting with Sharpies because my hands get so filthy <clears throat> and it's not very accurate, but it's easy for you to see. So that's why I do it. It's fun. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna start, I was about to punch a hole in my pattern pieces, but I'm not gonna do that. But we are going to do a little bit of pattern marking on here because otherwise it's it's really easy to throw away your pattern pieces, like especially this one, it's looking pretty ratty, you know? Okay. So now we have, he wants his painter's loop, or his hammer loop on the right side and we have our pocket right here. I just saw it. So what do we think? Do we think that this angle goes back on this side? It must go on that side. Like that. So let's see, our painter loop, our hammer loop is gonna come like right here. <laughs> I don't mind, it's, it's just funny. Okay, so our hammer loop goes like right here. We need that marked. And then our pocket I said was um, 10 and a half inches down, right? And that's gonna be on his left leg. Yeah, I think he does more often than I think too because sometimes I'll be like, shoot, I need whatever and he just like, he cuts it for me. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so this is the left leg. This is where it's coming in handy that I have the right, the front left, but the back right. <laughs> All right, so that was like 10 and a half inches, like about right here. We want this angled pocket and we're gonna center it. So let's just put some notches here. And then we know that that's where our pocket goes. <clears throat> Sometimes I'll even do this. I'll tape my pocket pieces where they're gonna go like that, just so I remember. Okay, what's left, our bib? And then we're ready to cut a sample out or cut and sew. <laughs> Ray, Ray, you gotta stop doing that. <laughs> it's not too bad today. Not too bad. <laughs> Thank you, Ray. There is no shortage of soap in this place. Everybody brought in their soap and there's so many bottles of it. I put them under the counter constantly. All right, so here is our front bib. Now, right now my seam allowances are still, I'm not quite thrilled with them because if I line the front bib, that's fine. I 
I'm just trying to decide if that's really what I want. I think it's nice. Like it's 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 um comfortable to have it lined. I think it's a it's, it's not that unconventional. And I'm only going to do the bib, so I think that'll be okay. So I think I will line that. I still haven't done my um, button plackets. I gotta think about that. I may do that tomorrow before we cut. <laughs> Hello, shim to toddler. <laughs> Okay, so do I have any, no, not really. He just wants to be able to have a pin in there. All right, and so if this is 3 8 of a seam, right? So if you're not gonna line your bib and maybe you want to hem it, so you can, this, this curve won't be too bad to hem. Um, you could also um, face it. But if you aren't going to line it, you might want to hit more hem allowance at the top edge here and this armhole. So just think about that. This right here is actually a seam. Um, and then I'm going to add a button placket here. And I'm gonna do that tomorrow before I cut. Cause I'm gonna do a fitting first. And then this way I'll know how much of a button placket does he need and does he need one at all. Um, just three eighths of an inch Mafio. I've just kind of been sticking with what was already on the rest of the pattern to begin with, but I say like on the bottom, on the pants part, I'm going to add to the side seams and the inseam probably a quarter of an inch to both so that I can flat fell one. I might not do that on the side seam, maybe just on the inseam because I would like it to be smaller, like, uh, not smaller. Um, so that I can make it flat to the garment and lower profile. That's what I mean by smaller. Yeah, I mean, no, this is like the, I'm gonna do the, this is my bib. And what I did was I just matched the points here that I, I, that I knew the measurements of, and then I just drew in a line and that kind of included the seam allowance. And then right now I'm drafting the bib. So I'm trying to decide, you know, like, if you're gonna have a hem here, make sure you put your bib lower down because when this is turned back on itself and sewn, you're gonna want a little bit of a buffer to get around it, to whether your bibs, your pocket's already on there and then you're hemming it, or you decide to place your pocket after you've hemmed it, you, you still are gonna want something. You don't really want it right up at the top there, right? So I, I would give yourself like, I don't know, an inch or two below the top of your bib for your pocket. So let's draw our bib pocket here. And okay, I just want a visual what it's going to look like here. So let's do my bib here, and let's say it's Hmm. Do we want it like seven inches? I think that's kind of too much. I'm gonna say uh, six and a half inches wide, finished. So if this was my finished bib, that would be the proportion of it. And as far as the length of it, I have the Sam apron. I could borrow the bib pattern from that. So if you want a curve or maybe you want an angle, um, I would think about what other pockets you're putting on your overalls and mimic whatever is going on on those. I have a couple of angles going out of the back pockets, which have an angle at that side pocket that has the angle. So I think I'll just stick with an angle. And let's do something like right about there. I'm looking at my Sharpie. I want some of it to stick out, right? You don't want to do a pocket that's so t so long that you can't grab your pin, right? 
So let's see, this is three and a quarter across, three and a quarter across. Is that right? Three and a quarter. Huh. That didn't look right. It looks like it's at an angle. It looks kind of small, doesn't it? If this were mirrored. Let's see. Hmm, let's see if I have full screen over here. That's not too small. <laughs> okay. We need our seam allowance though. So put that on there. I'm gonna do the, I'm just gonna stick with three eighths. Not my favorite seam allowance. I usually like quarter inch or half inch, you know. All right, and then um, I'm gonna give myself an inch hem allowance there, and then there's my bib. That thing looks tiny. Okay. Let's do the placement on this piece here. We're, I'm de definitely getting to like quick and dirty mode here. <laughs> so something like right there. That is one and a quarter of an inch down from the top edge. Let's do one and a half inches down from the finished top edge. All right. So it's something like that. Um, yeah, that'll work. Yeah, there we go. That's actually not where I would mark the pocket. That's where the pocket's gonna end. If you want a proper drill hole, you would go down a quarter of an inch and in a quarter of an inch, or it depends on what you're turning back as far as your seam allowance goes. So just this is my little pattern drafting um, lesson. So basically when you're looking at the pocket, let's say we're looking at this as it's finished, right? This is the finished pocket, top edge, top corner. You're marking the pocket so that it's the the hole that is marking on the garment is going to land inside the seam allowance of the pocket and that's so that you can drill a hole in your fabric and it'll get caught in the seam allowance and it won't show we're obviously not drilling a lot i still do use my screw punch and drill holes and mark things but i never do that with front of you guys so um you need a good section. What do you mean? And so um, I would probably go a quarter of an inch down and often I'm doing a quarter of an inch in or an eighth of an inch in. It depends on the seam allowance, we, but I'm going to do a quarter of an inch like that. And so that right there, that's where it would be. So it would be right, right here, a quarter of an inch in from the edge of the pocket and a quarter of an inch down. And I would also get rid of this right here so you can't see it. Oh, a whole, oh, food section, yeah. <laughs> we have not a non-sewing section, all right. And so then that's my new marking point for the pocket. Like that. Okay, so here's my bib. Oof, messiest pattern ever. All right. I've got my bib, I've got my bib pocket. I've got my back with my side pocket. I have this back pocket piece, which is still unadulterated. I have my, um, oh, this is my front bib, front pant with pockets, back bib. I have my waistband, right? Oh no, this is my straps. My pocket bag. Fly facing hasn't changed either. Um, waistband pocket facing 
Oh, <laughs> a food section would be fun. Two pocket facings, one outer waistband, and then one in lining. I never mark in blue. This is kind of no annoying me that I did this in blue. Um, one lining and interfacing. Oof. Two pocket bags, lining. Lining is always blue. Self is always black. Interfacing is always red. Two straps. All right, so for, for the grain line of your strap, I would just do it along your strap there. You don't have to line it up against your, you know, your back here and do it like that. You don't want your straps to be on the bias. So just go along the strap. That'll be stronger and more stable when you go to sew it. So name that pattern piece. That could be a really good game, actually. Oh, you hide the rivet. What do you mean you hide the rivet underneath? Or you hold, you hide the hole under the rivet? Oh, that's pretty smart. I like that. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that, that. So the only thing I have left is the um, side button opening, which he didn't want, by the way. But I think it would look, you know, more normal. Hi, April. How's it going? I'll be cutting and sewing tomorrow. I'm doing the sewing and cutting tomorrow because the sewing, I was going to say it's not going to take as long, but that's so funny that I say that because it's actually a whole garment. It's like a, it's like a garment and a half. I still think it'll be pretty quick to sew. I think it takes me two and a half hours to sew a pair of jeans. So I think that that's, um, you know, giving myself like about three hours to sew these plus stream time add like 1.5. <laughs> that's my unofficial <laughs> wait time thing. Right? Oh, exactly. Or like matching. <laughs> okay, here's, and here's my fabric. So it'll be nice and visible on camera, which is great. Here's my sketch. We did pretty good. We have the painter's loop, which is right here. I can't forget that piece. Um, and then let me look at this button band that I did on this pair here. Because I had to draft this myself. <laughs> I think um, I'll do something kind of similar. You know, you could actually use the pieces of like a zipper fly or a button fly to do your side buttons of overalls. <laughs> oh, thanks, April. I appreciate it. All right, what am I forgetting? Anything? I didn't do the knee, reinforced knee patches. That's it. I think everything else I have. Okay. I'm gonna do those really quick so I don't forget them. That's the one thing, Shim, I'm worried about pa uh, paper or fabric, if I have enough pa fabric for those. Wait. There we go. <laughs> oh, really? That's funny. Okay. So we want them twenty one and a half inches up. I still haven't matched my side seam either. I'm not too worried about it. I kind of looked and checked, but it's one thing you wanna make sure your whole side seam is gonna match. Oh, uh, let's get the grain line on here. Okay. 
So I'm just gonna trace my inseam, uh, my outseam, my hem, and my grain line to make this reinforced knee patch. Grain line. Okay, and 21 and a half. I have a one inch hem allowance. Unfortunately, right now there's three eighths of an inch seam, 18, 21 and a half, huh? Okay, this is like high, okay. So we wanna do something like this shape. Is my pocket going to run into that? My pocket is right here. <laughs> oh, I heard you. I heard you yelling. <laughs> so that's my pocket. What do you guys think for the knee patches? So if my pocket is like right here, so this is my pocket. Maybe I just sew it on top of that. I think that's what I gotta do. I think I'll go straight to the side seam like this. Let's do a perpendicular to the grain line uh, across the top here. Do something like this. And I'm on a right angle here at the juncture of the inseam. I could even do something different like that. You probably can't even tell what I'm doing now, huh? Get rid of this. I think that could look okay. Like that. Okay. You like the scoop more? Which, what do you mean? This one here or the old one? The one I was just doing it? Oh, slant it like the pockets. Hmm, that's an interesting idea, I like that. The doubles, oh, this one right here, under here? Well, I have this pocket on the side seam, right? So here's my pocket. And I don't think I want to scoop around it because it, it'll look weird with this straight angle. Is that what you mean? But maybe uh, mimicking this and putting a, a very straight, what if I did that? Uh, I don't mind this. I've seen this before and I think that's why. Let's see. I'm gonna type in reinforced knee pants. Oh, it's all kids stuff. Of course, right? Oh yeah, there's that curve. It's Carhartt that does that. Hmm. No, the pocket needs to overlap it, yeah. I like the, I, maybe I'll put this scoop back though. 
Yeah, the side, and it's only on one side, and then the other side has the hammer loop. I think this scoop is actually gonna get lost on the inseam of the pant. So maybe I need to do one that's more pronounced. You know, it's always more than what you think you need. Ooh, there's some old really goofy looking pants. I swear I'm about to see pants I've designed. Well, I actually didn't design them in my defense. <laughs> I just maintained the file for someone. Oh, someone else, the cur I don't like the curve. Okay. I kind of like, the only reason I don't like the, the I, I don't like this kind of curve. The only reason I don't like this is that it reminds me of a fly. Hmm. You sew the cargo pocket over the knee patch. Yeah, that's why I think it'll be lower profile and less bulky to sew over if I just like continue it to the side seam and just deal with it. And that pocket is only on one side, exactly. I think what I'll do is make a more pronounced scoop like this. I needed to get it 21 and a half inches over the knee. And I managed that, 18. Oh wait, why is this not as high now? What the heck? Did I measure wrong before? What? Let's check it out. Huh. 18. Did I say tw 21 and a half? What? what? That is so much higher. Yeah. Yeah, I asked him if he wanted a knee pad, but he doesn't. He actually has knee pads he puts on. But yeah, I, I actually think what you could do, Carrie, is what if you put some padding back there and you could quilt it and it'd be just a permanent part of your pants, whether you want the quilting to show on the outside or not, because that might be kind of weird. But I think it could look okay too. I think you could do like diagonal quilting and that would be kind of cool to give yourself some padding on your knees always there. And if it was batting, it could just wash and sew, you know, wash and... Um, Wash and it would be fine, you know, wash and sew. <laughs> I'm getting punchy, you guys. 18, 21, this is where I need these right here, that high. And then this pocket is right there. Okay. Let's give myself, give my, my uh, seam allowance right there. And then, like that little curve there. So this is more the right angles, right angle. I think that's it. Okay, Danny. Yeah, right, Shem? I think it's really good. Like, um, I've been in lots of funny situations where we're drawing on people. And, you know, the dress form is just not enough sometimes. But you need, or, or like you'll use tape or pins or whatever just to kind of get that, per, that um, perspective. This will work. Okay, we can't forget these. Th this is what I'm worried about with fabric. Knee. Um, reinforced knees. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm done. For now, um, I'm going to cut something very basic and sew it and try it on him. And then I'm going to determine how deep my button placket needs to be on the side. 
and how I'm going to draft. Oh, and I'll draft it with you tomorrow before we cut it out. And I'll make any pattern changes I need. And I'm going to also check the strap and make sure that it's going to lay okay. I'll feel so much better getting this right. So I'm going to do that. I hate using the fabric to do it, but I, I think I have some I can use. And I'll try and take a video so you can see it tomorrow and see how it's going and then what I'm going to fix. Especially the strap angle. I'm kind of like, okay, I want to make sure that's going to lay flat. So, all right. Thanks for hanging tough with me. I know drafting videos probably are a little bit more tedious for you. Check the size of the glasses. I, you know what, Shim? I just decided to only put one stitch line in that pocket, but I think you're right. I'll try and do that too. And I'll ask him. You're talking about your, your um, protective gear, right? Not your eyeglasses. Because I don't think he goes out there with his eyeglasses. That's something dumb I do, and then I bend over and they fall out in the dirt in front of me, and I'm like, great. Yeah, make sure it's a good size. Cool. He's really excited about having these though, so that's good. And that's why I want to get them right. And I want my I want my own pair too. <laughs> but I can usually I can use the like the the Burnside bibs and the Yanta combo, you know, draft my own. Or I could buy a pair, buy another pattern. I like that partner overalls. I like the little belt and those I think it's cute. Yeah, my pocket looked too shallow, Shim. I agree. I, you know, the thing is my husband's not huge and I think that those bibs on a lot of those overalls are really big and then they make the pocket proportional and it's huge. So he doesn't have as much space there, but at the same time, it could just be an optical illusion. So yeah, I'm going to check that out. Ah, thanks for putting it up with me, you guys. I appreciate you being here. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, thanks, Terry. I also need to ask him what color thread I can top stitch these in, but I bet it's going to be just the same to match. So <laughs> I won't get anything there. I need lining fabric too. I don't know if I have anything. I have to. I have to have something by tomorrow. <sighs> anyway, all right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, thanks for coming. And um, thanks. Don't forget to hit the like button. <laughs> Uh, non loop. Uh, we want to make sure that the bib pocket's going to fit which glasses he's using, Michelle. Are they the safety goggles, which are kind of thick? Not thick, rounded. They're so they're bigger. Or his regular. So, yeah. Hope the stream was long enough, Libby, for one of your four garments you need to sew by May. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Michelle. Or maybe even something to secure them. I asked if he wanted a zipper and he said no. Hmm. Be fine. nice to do something industrial up there. I would, I would love to see a brass zipper on here somewhere. <laughs> you know. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Same time, same place. Bye.